Welcome to Desalony. Darren here, uh, doing something a bit different today. Um, as you can see, I'm stood up. I'm also working with a safety harness. I've scripted nothing here. Um, one of those impromptu ones. I'm just going to look through some of my favorite kind of physical media, be that CDs, vinyl, uh, the odd cassette maybe, which I think stand out um, because of their interesting packaging, the presentation. So I'm not necessarily looking at artwork here. What I'm looking at is just the way that the whole package is put together. Yeah, I've jerry-rigged up something, which means that I can hopefully just uh, show you some records as I'm speaking, so I won't need to break away. Uh, where did all this stuff start? I mean, people have been like using kind of sli slightly novelty-based elements with their packaging for decades, decades and decades. One of the most high-profile ones I could think of is, of course, uh, yeah, Sergeant Pepper. In case you're unaware of, uh, of this, it comes in a gatefold sleeve, uh, like so. But it also came with a bunch of, I can just pull them out, intact in this case. Yeah, these are the cutouts, the Sergeant Pepper cutouts that you don't have some fun with. I guess if anyone knew what these kind of things would be worth, they would never touch these, just like this one has never been touched. Anyway, very little in the way of links today until maybe a bit later on, but um, I'm just going to pull up some things and just show you the kind of thing I'm talking about here, which I think kind of stand out. So um, yeah, here's one. This is a uh, version of Stand by R.E.M., which I think came out in a kind of a limited version. This one has those kind of cool cutouts in them. Um, yeah, this was one of these kind of things with 90s releases that you would find, you know, different releases that were meant to kind of um, build into a kind of a collection that you put in a box or just, you know, limited things like this, which kind of stood out just to try and get people to buy the same record more than once. Um, did that work? I don't know. Uh, one of the big kind of... Uh, designers, I guess you'd say, um, that I kind of tend to associate with this kind of cutout business would be Peter Saville of Factory Records. Um, I don't have a copy of the nice, you know, the Blue Monday with the floppy disk kind of cutouts, but uh, I've got this, which is interesting enough in itself because you often tend to see this as just a straight image on, on websites. And you don't really take in the fact that the cover of Architecture and Morality is in fact, yeah, that's a cutout on the front, which kind of keys in with the inner sleeve like that. Yeah, quite a, quite a common thing um, you saw um, in records throughout the kind of the 80s, 90s uh, and, and beyond that. And I guess this kind of stuff started up again, really, after kind of all the prog excesses and punk kind of cleared the decks a bit. I think you saw a lot of post-punk artists kind of start to try and do interesting things with packaging. Factory Records, Savile would be one. Uh, Pills Metal Box, that would be another good example. Yeah, I, I think they kind of kicked off this trend for kind of trying to do something interesting with sleeves rather than just, you know, plain old kind of cardboard squares. I'm not going to leave behind CDs and cassettes, by the way, today. Um, I'll just throw in a cassette here. I'm just doing these completely out of order. Uh, this is an interesting one I was quite liked. Uh, this is uh, the John Spencer Blues Explosion and their cassette version of Orange, which just looks like kind of a, you know, the artwork kind of mirrors the uh, vinyl and the CD releases. Nice touch with this one, though, is that the cassette itself is orange to kind of tie in with the artwork. Bit of a bit of a low grade one this, but I wanted to include it because I always thought it was quite a cool thing. Uh, uh, maybe a not so cool thing. Um, although I, I appreciate anyone who was trying to kind of break out of the kind of the, you know, the clear plastic CD boxes that kind of were ubiquitous for most of the first, I don't know, five, 10 years of uh, CDs as a thing. Yeah, I'll be getting to some of the cooler stuff in a minute, but this is kind of maybe some of the stuff that wasn't quite so well thought out. This is the CD single, a limited edition version of this, of Bad Days uh, by The Flaming Lips, um, which as you can see is kind of in a kind of a squashy pack. This green goo kind of uh, used to be a lot more liquid than this and you could squash it around a bit more, but clearly um, the air has got into it somehow and it's kind of dried out. Um, yeah. Um, these are pure gimmickry, I think, and they're just designed to kind of, you know, catch your eye. You're meant to kind of just snap them up off the shelf because you like, go, oh, look, it's full of green goo. Uh, back to vinyl. Um, an interesting one in terms of like the cutout, like like the cutout thing that I showed you with OMD. Uh, this is uh, Flemish Ultraism. Uh, it's uh, by a minor forest. Uh, it's a kind of a large gatefold sleeve, a compilation of some of their earlier stuff. Um, the interesting thing about this is that it does have a cutout. Cutout in this case is, it's very hard to kind of show this properly, but 
as you can see it's got like a piece of photographic film in the front which I don't recall seeing on any other records actually so I thought that one was worth a little look here a uh, great record as well I'm going to go on the vinyl for a few more minutes now um, way back around about the turn of the millennium um, I did a very very small run local print fanzine in that I had an interview which I was kind of really quite proud of it was one of those first early email interviews yeah I did it with a guy called John Upchurch he was in a band in Chicago called the Cocktails and he also helped set up um, a press graphic design printing organization called Fireproof I will show you probably the most well-known record of their first run this is that first self-titled Torts album and uh, as you can see yeah all printed on kind of hand cranked uh, vintage printing machines so you get kind of slight imperfections and it kind of really highlights a lot of the just the rawness of the material the cardboard um, also kind of goes against the grain slightly with with this kind of odd kind of flat base opening mechanism so you don't just slide them in and out it really has the feel of an old piece of 50s or 60s packaging um, let's just check out the vinyl I'm sure there's a little something in here just get that out yeah there you see it's very hard to kind of pick up the, the just you do get the slight indentations on on everything you see here which just kind of gives it that kind of hand finished feel and this became a bit of a signature for lots of kind of post rock uh post hardcore kind of bands of the day uh you know this was seen as a very a very cool sleeve concept here's a far more obscure and this is a kind of uh a post hardcore emo kind of band called thumbnail as you can see they clearly went a fireproof having seen that tortoise sleeve and and asked for a bit of the same bit of the same magic very much exactly the same opening and closing mechanism um and i'm sure within we will find another piece of paper yeah with some info about the band yeah the band hailed from uh, knoxville tennessee by the way and yeah this is rather a good record uh, fireproof weren't the only name in the game there were various other printing houses often in and around the chicago area it seems to have been a thing there um and they didn't just uh, restrict themselves to vinyl so i've got a few cds here by um one of my favorite bands of that kind of post rock post hardcore Kind of slinty types um these are by june of 44 this is their debut album engine takes to water and as you can see it's got that raw cardboard feel again uh hand printed and you know just 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 a world away from um from just nasty kind of plastic little crystal cases they kind of took it even further again with their tropics and meridians album um again it's very nice print book this one printed at one time press in chicago um i think the real joy here though is this extra that they printed with it which was a set of stamps in this little wax paper bag with artwork themed and kind of tying in with all the themes of the album uh yeah it's a really lovely thing this um i'm trying to get as close as i can i don't know how well you will see this but yeah very nice indeed uh, my last June of 44 release this is their Anatomy of Sharks EP um, again that kind of raw cardboard feel a bit more um, a bit more Spartan I guess in terms of graphics on this one though there's some very nice uh, kind of gold colored ink used there but the interesting thing here is this kind of matchbook design if you see what I mean there's a large kind of brass staple there and the whole front flips up like an old book of matches with the CD inside there again all these things they just they just help to make something just pop don't they when you're browsing through the ranks of you know identikit cds and vinyl just step away from uh, chicago for a while um and just show you something uh, slightly different but with with a similar kind of feel um very little introduction to this this is the three eps cd version uh, it's actually an album but it was conceived as three separate eps and was only ever recorded and released as an album I believe that's the case um, and this uses that kind of cardboard sleeve type so it looks very kind of uh, 
what came to be kind of quite a standard way of releasing CDs if you didn't want to go with a standard plastic uh, case route. Uh, the interesting thing I quite like about this one is that it came with this little kind of envelope tucked inside with an individual piece of artwork for each of the three EPs. So there's one for Up the Down Staircase. This one here for Question of Medical Ethics. And finally, Sam's Spaniel, the third of the three EPs in this thing. Yeah, just again, a nice thing. A very nice thing indeed. I'll just flip back to Chicago very briefly um, with another lovely piece of vinyl here. This is Rachel's handwriting uh, album. As you can see, it's very difficult to pick up the, the kind of the texture of the paper, the card used here, but yeah, uh, another really, really nice uh, release on a quarter stick. Um, I believe there is some nice supplementary material inside here. Yeah, this very nice kind of card insert with some information relating to tracks and when and where it was recorded. And yeah, a small booklet with just some you know, incidental complementary kind of uh, visual material to accompany the holy instrumental music. Again, very nice. Uh, of interest here, I'll try and show you here. I don't know if you can see this, but it does mention in that blurb at the bottom that uh, a drop of our blood was added to each color for authenticity uh, of the ink used in printing this booklet. So um, there you go, they mean it. Uh, break away from Chicago for a minute. Um, a cardboard CD again, um, kind of what looks like quite a standard kind of big thick pack here. This is uh, the Throwing Muses self-titled album from about is it 2001, 2002, I forget exactly. Um, and yeah, of course, 4AD being kind of synonymous with the design work of Vaughan Oliver. Um, I haven't really focused too much on that because um, I'm looking more at the packaging rather than the actual kind of aesthetics of the art itself. But I thought this was quite an interesting pack in that it folds out to give you kind of a full, this is about as full as you can get in terms of a kind of a piece of artwork in a CD. Um, I always thought this was quite nice. I never saw too many other people using this. And as you can see on the outer artwork, it does all kind of combine to make a single piece. Yeah, very nice. Okay, I'm going to do a shellac section. Yeah, I haven't got all the seven inches or anything like that, so I'm just concentrating on some of the albums here. But um, first up, yeah, Action Park. This was a fireproof press uh, recording, as you can tell by that kind of raw cardboard finish. Shellac logo on the back. And yeah, if we open it up, you see these lovely kind of uh, microphones inside. Um, yeah, and it does state down here, this Unipack style album jacket was printed at Fireproof Press Chicago. The inner, I believe, was printed elsewhere, but um, yeah, this is the kind of the inner artwork of it, which again is um, their version of Action Park, the infamous uh, park, which had to be closed because of so many people uh, getting injured on it. <laughs> this one's going to take a while to unpack. This is excellent Italian Greyhound. Uh, this has some lovely artwork. Uh, all the artwork here on this outer wrap sleeve. This is the work of Jay Ryan uh, of Bird Machine. I've got quite a few of his posters dotted around the house. This is just kind of the outer sleeve to the main record, which is, as you can see there, excellent selling ground. And it is a gatefold, of course, which opens out with some more Jay Ryan art inside. Of interest with most of these shellac releases is if I kind of give it a little tilt, I believe, yeah. I wish more bands did this. Some did for a while, but it tends to have kind of fallen away a bit. Yeah, they include a CD, um, a digital accessory, I believe, uh, Steve Albini liked to call it because he was never really down with the whole idea of proprietary digital technology as a way of archiving music. Just one more shellac. I'll show you this is uh, Dude Incredible. As you can see, sticking with that kind of raw cardboard look, but with a, an interesting kind of monkey print there in the center. Yeah, in that uh, interview that I conducted with John Upchurch of Fireproof Press way back in the 90s, I did ask him what shellac uh, 
did they draw any kind of comparisons between between their recording methodology and you know the printing process and um john helpfully went and asked bob weston what he thought and he basically just said old school rules that was it um i think there is probably something analogous about analog recording and printing in a very hands-on way you know every kind of uh, smash of a plate onto a paper is is unique um there's probably something in that uh, i'm sure someone could write a dissertation on that i'm not about to here and finally i'm just going to close with the cd this is probably uh probably the rarest cd that i own i don't know quite how much it's worth i, I know it was worth worth a fair amount uh, for a while um yeah this is dogs by Nina Nastasia. It's a debut album from about the year 2000, 2001, I believe. I'm going to very gently take it out of its plastic sleeve here. Yeah. As you can see, this one, again, all kind of hand printed. I'm trying to give you a feel for the texture here. Um, and I think these were literally all hand, hand assembled. Um, yeah, this is released by Socialist Records. This was a very, very limited release. You do see copies of this CD released with in just a standard kind of uh, dual case, but this was how it originally came out. You might be able to pick up the the kind of the hand typed print on this waxed paper, which the CD is in. And it also comes here with, again, a kind of hand assembled, hand folded, hand printed book containing a genuine photograph. And this is all just, I think these were individually hand typed. Um, they certainly have the look of genuine typewritten um, print. It's a lovely, lovely thing. Um, and I believe very limited, so there aren't too many of these out there. And that's it. No real grand themes <laughs> linking anything today. Uh, I try not to kind of focus too much on the collecting aspect of uh, music. Um, I like physical formats and I certainly I'm usually on the lookout for, you know, interesting secondhand stuff. I just can't afford new vinyl these days. And um, I'd rather not get into the fetishizing of it too much. But I think when someone has gone to the effort to really create something different from the norm. Uh, I think it's something to be celebrated and um, more than happy to kind of share these with you today. That's it. This will have been a bit rambly. I'm working completely scriptless and I'm just literally pulling records in front of you and, and pulling out things from memory. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, please. Yeah, leave a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if, you, uh, if you've learned anything cool today. And um, yeah, in the meantime, you take care and I will see you soon. Bye for now.